Hey you guys, it's Marta Geek. In this video, I wanted to talk about the PlayStation Vita in 2020. Yes, 2020. And I also wanted to talk about what could have been Sony's hybrid console before the Nintendo Switch even existed. So that's why I have the PlayStation TV here because I wanted to show you guys the original unboxing of the PlayStation TV and the PlayStation Vita, which is the first, the current one that I actually own. Of course, this is not my first PlayStation Vita. I actually owned the first one, which was the black big one uh, and when it came out in December 2011 in Japan. Uh, then in February 2012, it actually came out in, in the United States. And then I purchased the Assassin's Creed bundle, which was white, but it was the, still the, the 1000 or the 1000 series, the old fat one. Uh, but then when the slim one actually came out, I loved it. And in Japan, it actually came in a whole bunch of colors. I think in the United States, it only came in blue um, on GameStop, I think it was. And but I decided to go ahead and pick it up from Japan, and that's why I got it and love it. Um, also, I wanted to show the um, the box that it came in with because it's it's a Japanese box, and still today people still ask me um, if uh, these consoles still work here in the United States, even though they are from Japan. And yes, they do work because they are region free. That's why they do work on anywhere in the planet would you buy it from. You might be asking me, but why would I buy a PlayStation Vita in 2020? There's still a lot of great classic games like PlayStation 1 games that you can play here, uh, which is really cool. Um, there's a lot of the PlayStation Vita right now has a huge library of great games that, you know, are for me under underappreciated. And I, you know, for me, it was a great console. So um, here I'm just going to show you guys uh, a portion of the unboxing because I didn't put all the cables in. I just put the console and, you know, that's it. Of course, it comes with power cord and all that. And here, of course, is the console, which is, of course, nothing new. You guys have been seeing it on my videos. And this is it. So, of course, one of the reasons why the PlayStation Vita was a failure from the beginning, uh, my opinion, was the memory card, the proprietary memory card that Sony actually made these consoles work with, you know, because I don't get it. Why couldn't you make it work with micro SD cards, which are so freaking cheap? But these cards right here are so damn expensive. Like this is the 32 gigabyte and I actually purchased it for around $65 which is crazy, you know, it's crazy. And right now, if you try to buy a 64 gigabyte, it's gonna cost you $100 or more. So that for me is one of the, the reason why the PlayStation Vita had a hard time taking off. And it was f since the beginning, since this came out, it came out with this card. And you know, it was just too expensive to invest money on those cards, but, you know, once you did invest the money, it was so great because you could have downloaded so many games to your system. So that's one thing that I really liked, having the extra capacity. Uh, yes, I think they do have one gigabyte of internal storage, but once you put a memory card in it, they, the one gigabyte of internal storage just became, um, you know, just useless. Uh, right now in 2020, uh, you can still use the PlayStation 4 Remote Play. You can still use it to play your PlayStation 4 remotely on the PlayStation Vita as long as you have good service, a good Wi-Fi connection. Uh, also, you can still log into your account you know, here on the PSN and download free demos. You could download classic games for from PlayStation 1. You could still download uh, buy games from here as well. Um, even though the, the store actually looks, you know, a little bit like empty, you know, they eliminated like all the pictures for latest games and featured games and all that because I believe games just stopped coming out for the PlayStation Vita already. So you have games, for example, this one is from October 21, which is the last game that came out October 21, 29, uh, 2019, October 20, Deep Space Rush. I believe that's the last game that I think it came out because it says new releases and you got demos and the first game that you got is that one. Then the second one is Spirit Hunter and G October 9th and so on and so on. Uh, you got top do downloads here. You can see the greatest games here. Uh, people have been downloading here. Features, free to play, top downloads and all that uh playstation plus is no no longer great here it's crazy that they you can still buy playstation plus from here 
you know you can still buy playstation plus from here but there's no free playstation vita games during the month so honestly you know i just wouldn't pay attention to that thing right there the other great thing about the playstation vita is that you could unlock trophies on here you know trophies that you have on your ps4 and trophies on the switch you can all see them in one list it's one of the greatest thing about the playstation vita is that you could have unlocked trophies and they all link and add up together to your playstation 4 as well trophies as well that's something that was so freaking awesome on the playstation vita in this page i got apps so these are the apps that are right now are still working surprisingly not live tweet the twitter app still works the twitch app still works I think one of these two doesn't work. The Netflix or Hulu Plus doesn't work. One of those two. Um, you still got these applications there. The web browser this still has a web browser. Email uh, still works. Uh, it has a camera, of course, right here in the back and in the front has a camera. And, of course, these applications over here, which I don't use at all, near PlayStation Remote Play, PlayStation 3 Remote Play, and so on and so on. Uh, games over here that I have uh, right now installed here is the MLB The Show 15, one of the greatest baseball games on the go. Persona 4, I had to start it again yesterday as a new game because I can't find my save file. I don't know what happened. Uh, World of Final Fantasy, awesome game. I was playing it yesterday again. I got all these games right here, you know, Rogue Aces, Battle, PlayStation, All-Stars, Lego games. Over here, I got some more games like uh, Joe Danger, Guacamole, Kick Beat, Injustice Gods Among Us, freaking awesome game. God of War Collection, which is an awesome game here on the Switch, on the Vita. Uh, you got here, you got Lotta Croft Go, Sparkle 2, Super Magical. You know, so there's a whole bunch of games here. Classic games, Star Wars, Force Unleashed, Dino Crisis 2, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. I was playing it again because the new game is coming out soon. So I was playing it again here on the, on the Vita and love it. Let me know if you want to see a video for that. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. I don't know, for some reason, I wanted to download it again and start playing it. Spider-Man, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, really good game. And Ocean Horn, I really like it because it's like a rip-off of Zelda, Link Awakening, something like that. Really cool, a game. So, yeah, of course, the PlayStation beat in 2020, you know, it's dead. It's dead. You know, Sony is not releasing any games whatsoever for it. Uh, they just said they're not going to be releasing any more uh, sequel to the PlayStation Vita or I waste time releasing mobile platform gaming at all. So that's one negative thing there. So kind of sucks that Sony just, you know, just gave up on the PlayStation Vita and mobile gaming whatsoever. Now, the reason why I say this could have been a great hybrid console is because in 2013, they announced the PlayStation Vita TV. Okay, this was called the PlayStation Vita TV when it was first announced in Japan and released in November 13. And if you check my playlist, there I have an unboxing of the original one, which was called PlayStation Vita TV. It will, I got the white one and i made a hands-on video for it and i played a lot a lot of it and i just didn't like it and sold it because it was just basically useless in october 2014 then it came out on the united states and they changed the name from playstation vita tv to playstation tv now why do i say it sucked the reason it sucked is because this was supposed to play your playstation vita games on your tv right the problem was is that it couldn't play your playstation vita games on the tv it would only just play some playstation vita games not every playstation vita games and the reason is because some or a lot of the playstation vita games had touchscreen features and just because they had some touchscreen features they were all blocked from the uh, from the playstation tv which kind of sucks because they could have adjusted those games so they could work with just controls uh and they just didn't do you know the extra effort to make it happen because i'm pretty sure it could have happened because hackers actually got it working there was a hack going on where you use your email and something like that and it was you know the process was so long that i was like nah i'm not gonna go through all that but there was a process to actually make all the games work but sony couldn't do it you know a hacker 
out there did it, but Sony couldn't do it. So, you know, that's why this thing actually died right away. Of course, this was also sold with the PlayStation 3 controller bundled, but this one right here was only with the um, PlayStation Vita TV console or TV. And this is how it looked. Of course, really cool, really nice and small. I really like the form factor. It was really easy and simple. You know, they, this was just straightforward. This could have been PlayStation first hybrid console. Just imagine, this is how it was supposed to work, right? You're playing video games here on the PlayStation Vita, right? And you get home and you're like, you know what? Let me go ahead and play on the TV. So you go right here, take the game out, right? Take the game out. And right here, right, this box will be connected to your TV via HDMI, right? You go over here, whoops, you know, right, come on, take this out right here. I like, I hate these things. Put it right here. There you go. And that's it. That's how simple it was supposed to work. And it, think about it. Look at the Nintendo Switch. You play on the go, you put the console on the dock, and, and it starts streaming on the TV. This is basically the same thing, but instead of putting the the game, the console on the dock, you're actually putting the card on another little system that's connected to the TV, and that would work perfectly. Why couldn't this work? There's no other reason than Sony. Sony just didn't want to make it work. I don't know why, but they just didn't want to make it work because Come on, man. A hacker out there makes it work with a hack, but you can't with your engineers. You can't make it work. You know, that it kind of sucks. So but still in 2020, uh, what can you do with the PlayStation TV? Right. In 2020, you still can log into the store, PSN store. You can still use it as a remote play device. You can play, you can you can connect this to a TV and remote play your PlayStation 4 to this device connected to your TV to a second TV. You can still do that in 2019 in 2020. Uh, you can also play all the classic games like the PlayStation 1 games uh, that are in your SIM card on your card. You just put it right there. Boom. And you can play all those games that you have installed in your PlayStation Vita card. You just put it right there. Boom. And you'll play them all. Um, here, of course, it has a USB port. But this USB port, if I'm not mistaken, it's only for the PlayStation 4 controller. I don't think you could have used uh, external like videos and all that. But, man, that could have been great, right? They could have enabled that to actually work with video. Uh, or USB drive and you can watch a video like that. But no, if I'm not mistaken, this only works for connecting uh, PlayStation 3 controller instead of wireless. You can use it wired. And of course, you got the HDMI and you have the Ethernet port, which was good if you're going to use uh, remote play. You had to use that. That way you get a better connection. And of course, you put here the power cord right there. And that's it. So this is such a nice, beautiful device, in my opinion. So tiny, so small that it, it, and, and it should have worked it should have worked but playstation just i guess they didn't want it to work because they didn't make any effort for it to make it work hackers out there actually care more about this device than sony did so that's my opinion about this device but right now this is very hard to get this is uh, I, when it came out, it was around $100 by itself. Uh, then it started dropping, 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 dropping. Then it dropped to like $40. Um, and that was a steal for $40. And right now, I think I saw the other day, it was like around $300 because this is like impossible to buy right now. But like you see here, I've been showing you guys some gameplays um, being played on my monitor with the PlayStation TV connected to it and it's just works it just works with the games that actually works it just works but of course there's a whole bunch of games that just doesn't work like uh, even the uncharted game which is an awesome game on the playstation vita it doesn't work uh injustice gods among us injustice gods among us which is a great fighting game on the playstation vita it doesn't work so yeah that's the problem with this device that that you know it could have been better and if this these two devices would have worked this could have been a great hybrid console but sony just dropped the ball you know sony just didn't actually care about it so yeah that's um the reason why i'm doing this video i just wanted to talk about 
you know, about the PlayStation Vita in 2020. And, you know, a lot of people don't even know this thing actually exists. So I just want to talk about that. And, you know, and what can you do? I was going to put the game in the SD card section. And, of course, I never did a video, a farewell video for the PlayStation Vita because, you know, I still play my PlayStation Vita. Once in a while, I still pick it up and play. Just yesterday, I was playing World of Final Fantasy. I was playing, like, almost two hours of it. Then I started playing uh, Persona 4 again, and I started had to play it from the beginning. So, you know, I, I'm still playing it in 2020. 2020 i'm still picking this up and playing it so when you think about it i am happy that the playstation vita ever existed because it gave me a lot of hours of game time and a lot of enjoyment i had it from day one and i loved it so a lot of i feel bad for people that actually picked it up late because they didn't enjoy the console from the beginning i been playing with the playstation vita since day one since it came out in japan and I loved it. I always found games to play on it. That's why there's so many videos on my channel. There's so many playlists on my channel, uh, PlayStation Vita. And I used it a lot for remote play. I, I played a whole bunch of games here from the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation Vita. And that was just awesome. Being able to do that well, years ago. That was just freaking awesome. So I am so happy that I actually got to play the PlayStation Vita since day one. But I feel bad for people who actually picked it up really late. When the PlayStation Vita was already dead, people were already thinking about picking it up. So for you guys, feel sorry for you. At least there is a huge library of great games on the PlayStation Vita that you can start playing if you never played before. Like the collection of God of War, Killzone Mercenary, Tearaway on the PlayStation Vita is awesome. Little Big Planet on the PlayStation Vita is awesome. Uh, you got Uncharted Golden Abyss is awesome on the PlayStation Vita. Sly Cooper thieves and time something like that is amazing on the playstation beta there's a whole bunch of great games on the playstation beta that if you never played you have a huge library plus you got you know mlb the show 15 which for me in my opinion is one of the best um, baseball games on the go and that's it you know when it comes to physical games i don't have too many of them because thanks to the playstation plus i have a whole bunch of free games other than that guys i just want to share this video with you guys just to let you know that in 2020 what can you do with the PlayStation Vita and what can you do with the PlayStation v, uh, TV or Vita TV the way it used to be called before. Like I said, I never did a farewell video for the PlayStation Vita even though yes, it's dead, but I still play it. You know, and once in a while if I want to make a video for the PlayStation Vita, I'll just freaking make it, you know. But nobody tells me I can't make a video for the PlayStation Vita. So yeah. Let me know in the comments what you think about my opinions about the Vita in 2020. And let me know what you think about what could have been PlayStation hybrid console way before the Nintendo Switch actually existed. Thanks for watching this video. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.